So, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the, the organizers of this very interesting and stimulating session for giving me the uh, excuse to talk about uh, Gausir, a late medieval trading place in northern Iceland. Uh, most of the sites we've been hearing about in this session are early medieval, uh, but there is a reason which will uh, come clear, hopefully, uh, uh, later on in this talk why uh, I, I think this is uh, pertinent in that context. I think there are some, some parallels uh, uh, that might be interesting when we are considering uh, the emergence of uh, uh, trading sites uh, like those uh, Sven was talking about uh, at the beginning of the session in the, in the morning. Uh, uh, oh. Now, Gausir is uh, well known from written sources from the 13th and 14th centuries. Uh, it was at that time Northern Iceland's principal port and uh, uh, along with Eirar in the south, uh, these two sites are, or, or ports, are those most frequently mentioned in, in the sources, and there are, there are lots of uh, uh, mentions uh, of them. Uh, the, the earliest uh, mention is from 1163, and uh, at that time it seems to be a, a thriving place, it's long, long established, uh, and the last one is in 1398, and 1400 is a, is a big transition time in Icelandic history, uh, both politically and uh, economically, and uh, there, was, there were big changes then in, in the nature of uh, external uh, trade. Uh, <laughs> to give an, a, a sense of the activity at this site, uh, the, the annals of the 14th century, they mention uh, 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 with shrill excitement when there are more than three ships uh, overwintering at, at Kausi. So that gives you a, a sense of uh, uh, the, the size of this uh, uh, operation. Uh, and they were ships uh, not larger uh, than that you could uh, drag them ashore. So this is th these are also relatively small ships uh, uh, compared to what was uh, uh, mainstream, let's say, in, in northern European waters at that uh, uh, time. Uh, the written sources tell us about uh, mainly about people coming and going. That's, that's where uh, Gausser figures in, 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 in uh, the written accounts. Uh, uh, there, is, there are also anecdotes about uh, partying and brawling, some, some killing and maiming taking place. Uh, and political meetings also. People, people meet up at, at uh, uh, Gausser. Uh, <laughs> interestingly, there is no mention of trade as such taking place uh, at Gausser. There, no, there are no accounts of shopping or, or, uh, or what happens at the counter. Uh, now, just as a, a general background, uh, Iceland is, of course, in the middle of the North Atlantic. It is a marginal environment for the type of uh, economy and, and uh, social structure that was introduced there in the, in the Viking Age, in the late 9th century. Uh, it, it supported uh, animal husbandry, but not uh, uh, agriculture. Uh, and it was a small economy. There were some, some 50,000, 50, 60,000 people living on the uh, island at this uh, time. Uh, <laughs> and in accounts of, of medieval trade in Iceland, uh, the, uh, scholars tend to stress the, the, the lack of uh, necessities like uh, wood, uh, iron and, and grain. And, and certainly we know that these were important uh, trading uh, uh, items uh, throughout Iceland's history. Uh, uh, specialized uh, uh, products like, like wine and, and wax are, are also quite important. Uh, uh, Iceland became uh, Christian in the 11th century and uh, the church of course needed uh, 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 those kinds of material uh, in addition to, to all, all kinds of uh, uh, equipment. Uh, and the small size of the economy means that uh, uh, there was really no economic basis for uh, craft specialization. There, there's, there's, there's really no evidence in Iceland for, for uh, specialized uh, craftsmen. There's, there's, uh, uh, pe people make things at, at home, but uh, craft specialization does not take place uh, to any extent uh, on, on, the, on the island it, itself. Uh, <laughs> so, that's so that's important to, to, to bear in mind. So uh, everything uh, that, that uh, uh, requires uh, specialist uh, uh, craftsmanship is, is important. important. Now, the exports uh, uh, fall into two categories. There's, there are bulk exports of, of textiles, uh, 
uh, from the at least from the 12th century there's some debate about whether they were in fact uh, some some special product uh, uh, like sales uh, but then from the from the early 14th century onwards it's stockfish and oil which is the, the which which is the main uh, bulk export item from 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 Iceland uh, there are also prestige uh, items like like sulfur Iceland is the only uh, a place in Europe, north of the Alps, where you can where you can uh, uh, get sulfur, and there is there is a growing trade in 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 sulfur from the late 13th century onwards. Mm -hmm. They were also ex uh, exporting live falcons, and uh, which is probably best known, and is I think quite relevant. Uh, they were exporting literature. Icelandic scholars and poets were well known from the 12th century onwards uh, for for uh, uh, having expert knowledge in, in the history of the Scandinavian countries and they produced uh, a lot of text. They had careers at the, mainly the Norwegian uh, court uh, selling this expertise and uh, it has been argued that they were also exporting books, that's more, more uh, questionable, but uh, certainly the production of, of a certain kind of uh, uh, cultural product, if you like, was, was uh, uh, an important part of the economy, I would, I would argue. Now, this is a, an elevation model of, of, the, of the site. It is the, the biggest preserved medieval uh, uh, port in, in Iceland, and it has uh, uh, visible structural remains on the, on the, on the surface. The, the circular one at the, at the right is, is a churchyard with a church in the, in the middle. Uh, the rest are, we call them booths. They are, they are uh, 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 sunken featured structures with, with uh, uh, turf accumulation. I wouldn't even call them. Uh, walls, and uh, we, have, we have excavated some 10% some of the 10% uh, of the site. There have been there were previous excavations uh, there in the beginning of the 20th century and in the 1980s, uh, but in 2001 to 6 we excavated a, uh, the churchyard and uh, a, a, a significant proportion, let's say, of the of the uh, uh, merchant's camp and a number of uh, smaller trenches. Now the traditional interpre interpretation of this place is that it was a seasonal marketplace where foreign merchants uh, and Icelandic customers uh, met to exchange goods. This is, this is, that's, the, that's, uh, uh, that's how the, the sources have been interpreted and, and that would fit our, our models into uh, about, about what, what these kinds of places were all about. Now, uh, the results of our excavations are that we, we can certainly confirm the seasonality of this place. Uh, uh, it is a, a place where, where people are staying only probably for a few weeks in the, during the summertime. Uh, there, are, there are a number of uh, summer signals. Uh, and these, these structures are, are extremely ephemeral. They're basically uh, sunken featured buildings. Uh, they dig big pits and they put tents on top. And, and, uh, and uh, most of the deposits we excavated are, are, uh, is, are upcast. Uh, so so th there's very little uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, actual, actual surfaces forming uh, at, this, at this site. Uh, interestingly, there is, uh, there is uh, good evidence for permanent plot division. So we excavated two of these plots, and the division between them is absolutely stable throughout. Uh, this is the, the 14th century we're talking about in this part of the, the site. Uh, everything we excavated there is, is uh, on, on top of a, a tephra layer volcanic ash from, from 1300. Uh, <laughs> so the, these are, there are two plots, uh, and uh, the, the outlines of which are stable, but the insides are, are, uh, are very fluid. So they are, they are redesigning the, the, the inside uh, uh, arrangements uh, practically every, every year. And uh, uh, so th they are divided, each plot is divided into between three and six uh, smaller spaces, uh, uh, changing from, from one period to the, to the, or one year to the, to the next. There are, uh, the only permanent structure at the site is a church. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the final phase of it is, is definitely earlier than 1300. Uh, there, is a, there is an analytic reference to it, it uh, uh, blowing uh, off its foundations in, in 1359. We don't know if it was re-erected uh, after that, but uh, uh, it certainly lasted that long. Uh, it may be, uh, the earliest phase, may, uh, which is, there was nothing to date about it, but it, it could be from the, and very likely is from the 12th uh, century. Uh, the artifact collection from this site is, is very small. It's uh, 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 reasonable by Icelandic standards, and it's, it's very unusual also by Icelandic uh, standards. Uh, there's a, a, a very large, again, by Icelandic standards, uh, ceramics collection, 89 pieces. That's, uh, that's uh, it's, it's, a, it's a record for the 14th century. 
uh, a lot of baking plates, uh, whetstones, leather shoes, sulfur, uh, textiles, and, and the largest categories are iron and bronze scraps. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, the, the ceramics in particular are, uh, are uh, uh, in, very interesting, and, and, but they are uh, almost an exact subset of the, the, the kind of ceramics you find in Bergen at the same time. Uh, uh, so that you have the same uh, range of, of uh, uh, pottery types and in, in the same uh, proportions. Uh, there are a f a very, there's very few uh, individual finds which, which tell us something about the, 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 the nature of trade. Uh, there's a single find of walrus. Uh, there is one possible coin, but it's a blank. Uh, there are two falcon bones, and there are two weights, and there are, and there are lots of lap dogs. Uh, interestingly, uh, there is some evidence for elite uh, consumption. Uh, they were they were driving uh, uh, cattle and, and sheep to, to the to the site on, on hoof and slaughtering them there. But they are they are uh, 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 especially the cattle are are just the two three year olds uh, of of, a, of a, which suggests a high quality uh, meat. And uh, there are very undoubted foreign signals. This is, this is not an Icelandic sort of place. Uh, uh, everything uh, about it screams foreigners in, 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 the, uh, uh, in the material culture. Uh, like I mentioned, the, the, the ceramics suggest this. Uh, uh, there, there are no, there's no evidence for particular Icelandic food ways that are, 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 are well known. Uh, and there are, there are lots of plant remains uh, or remains of plants which are either rare or unique in the Icelandic uh, uh, context. Uh, there is some evidence for on-site processing of, of uh, sulfur and, and possibly fish. Some industry, a little bit of ironworking, uh, but no specialized crafts. There are a couple of, of uh, uh, crucibles, uh, but uh, no, nothing you can, you can really say suggesting uh, specialized uh, 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 craftsmanship. So we think that uh, this evidence is consistent with uh, uh, the material culture of, of the ship's crews. That, that's, that's basically what's happening there. The, the people who are bringing this stuff there are, are the people who are coming in on the, on the ships. And it's, a, it's like an ar arrival or a departure lounge. It's a place where people wait for uh, ships coming and, and where they wait for them uh, leaving again uh, the, the following, following summers. Uh, merchants possibly entertaining their, their, their guests Possibly some high status Icelanders uh, residing. Uh, the, the written sources certainly, certainly suggest that that took uh, place. Some minor re ship repairs uh, and, and uh, the, the, the kind of uh, detritus that you get from the processing and packing and loading and unloading of, of, of goods. But there is really no evidence for retail uh, taking, taking place. And that's the, the, the lack of coins in particular, which is, of course, very embarrassing for the, for the commercial interpretation of this, this site. Uh, and, and really no specialized crafts either. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the sulfur processing is interesting, I think, because it, is, it, is, it really shows what kind of uh, place this, or it suggests something about what kind of place this is. Uh, uh, there, the, the, there are pits where, where, the, where the raw sulfur was thrown in and then it was fired up. This is the, the, uh, 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 the crudest way of reducing sulfur. Uh, the, just the, the volume of it before before packing and, and uh, uh, sailing off with it and and if this was a a uh, 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 an actual marketplace where people were bargaining over these kinds of things it would make no sense to to uh, to transport uh, this re relatively heavy material and it comes from sort of 150 kilometers away uh, unreduced uh, unless uh, this is a, a, a monopolistic kind of operation where uh, there's just a fixed price for the for the for the the sulfur, and it doesn't matter for the for the farmer, uh, uh, and there's no incentive for for the, the people who are selling this to 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 reduce it. Uh, <laughs> so we think that uh, Kausir was a, was a port certainly, and the merchants' camp. It's a place where the merchants uh, uh, live, probably only for a few days or a few weeks. Uh, so it's a transport hub. It's a, it's a it's a node in a long distance trade network. Uh, but it, it's more re really, if we, if we seek a modern analogy, it's more like an airport rather than a shopping mall. It's, it's, it's the, 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 the purpose of this place is, is not to uh, exchange goods. Uh, it's, it's, it's a part of a system that allows the exchange of goods, but the, the site itself uh, does not have that uh, primary function. 
Uh, and in fact, we know quite a lot about how, how trade took a place, took, uh, how, how it happened in, in Iceland in the 13th and 14th centuries. Uh, these, chief, these, these merchants, they came, came in, come in in the middle or late summer, they, they, they seek lodging with uh, high status people, um, and they spend the rest of the winter uh, uh, going to parties, bargaining, and, uh, and uh, uh, under the, the, the watchful eye of the, of the chieftains who are, who are really in control of this, the, the, the legislation says that they decide the prices. Uh, <laughs> so this is not, a, this is not a, a very dynamic kind of market economy. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's more about uh, uh, control, uh, and it, is, it seems that the native elite is in, is in control uh, not only of the prices, but also of who gets to buy, uh, which is probably the most important thing. And, uh, uh, and also when and how contracts are honored. Uh, and there's quite a lot of literature about when, that, uh, when it do doesn't happen, and when the chieftain who had uh, taken responsibility for a merchant uh, 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 changes his mind. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and these, are, these tend to be sort of uh, uh, situations which are loaded with political meaning. Uh, <laughs> it is, and I should say as an aside, it's arguable that much of the actual trade took place in Norway. Uh, uh, what was happening was, was that Icelanders were, were leaving Iceland to go to Norway mainly, and, uh, uh, and uh, <laughs> it is quite likely and, and uh, uh, easy to argue that in, in fact most of the, the imports were arranged by those Icelanders uh, in Norway. So the, the so actual bargaining takes place there rather than in, in, in Iceland. So the implications I think of this is that are that uh, uh, the, the trade of goods are, are really just an element, they're an important element, but they're just, they're not the, the, the whole issue uh, when we are th thinking about sort of these pre-modern long distance transport systems. Uh, and, and when we do have evidence of such systems, we, we should not automatically imagine that uh, commerce uh, is, is taking place and, the, and it certainly sh should not be seen as the, the deri driver of developments and, and we should certainly should not uh, uh, think that these, these kinds of systems were governed by market uh, dynamism. And uh, we, we tend to think automatically in, in those terms, uh, but I think it is important in the medieval context uh, 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 to, to remember that that's not all, all uh, what it's about. I think I've, I've already done, I've got my main point through, I hope, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. Thank you. <laughs>